here and online and we'll just start with a, a word of prayer Father again we thank thee for thy goodness to us and for thy love to us we thank thee for the Lord Jesus and we thank thee that he came into this world because he loves us and cares for us and we just look to thee that as we would spend this time reading thy word and hearing again from a message from the Bible that thou would just help us and bless us we just give thee our thanks now in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Amen we'll read in the book of Romans which is in the New Testament Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts and then Romans And we'll read from Romans chapter 1. And we find the Apostle Paul, as he was, was going to Rome, he could say in verse 8, First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, making request, if by any means now at length, I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end you may be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith both of you and me. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was led hitherto that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Now we know God will bless the reading of his word. Really the, the focus is upon those words in verse 15, and in verse 16, the Apostle Paul was saying these words that he was ready to preach the gospel to those that were in Rome also. If we looked at his life, he was one who persecuted the Christian people. He hated the Christians and he did everything he could to destroy them. He put people in prison. He was there when Christians were killed. And then something happened. He had a personal relationship with God and it changed him. He no longer persecuted Christians for he was one himself. And he went about preaching the gospel. What we are doing today, telling people about God. And Paul here could say that he was ready to preach the gospel to those that were at Rome also. And he gave the reason why. Because he could say, for he was not ashamed, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. It is a message from God. It is the gospel of Christ. It is through the power of God that we can have salvation. It is to everyone that believeth. To everyone that believeth. Salvation is by faith. It is not of works, it is not of religion, but it is by putting trust 
in God through the Lord Jesus Christ his son Paul said he was ready to preach the gospel now if I said to you today are you ready you might say to me well what do you mean ready for what it's a very big question isn't it are you ready well am I ready for breakfast am I ready to go out they can open up lots of different things but are you ready are you ready for heaven are you ready for help are you ready for death the Bible tells us that the sinner is ready to perish the sinner is ready to perish John chapter 3 tells us that he that believeth on him is not condemned but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God the sinner is ready to perish are you ready to perish today it would be a very foolish thing wouldn't it if you were ready to perish when you can be ready for heaven you can be ready for God today the Bible tells us that the Lord Jesus he is ready he's ready to save in 1 John chapter 4 verse 14 it tells us that the father sent the son to be the savior of the world the Lord Jesus Christ he died he died for you and he died for me and he wants you to be ready to be ready to accept him as your own savior Hebrews chapter 4 tells us this today if ye will hear his voice harden not your hearts we can harden our hearts can't we we can say it's not for me we can say I don't want to know we can say I don't believe but it doesn't alter the fact that we are still going to die that is a certainty isn't it it is a certainty it's 100% that people know they will die at some point are you ready if you were to die today where would you go what would happen well Romans 10 verse 9 tells us that if thou shalt confess confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved that is a certainty if we confess with our mouths if we speak and tell people if we speak to God if we confess with our mouths but very careful it's not just playing lip service and just saying not just with our mouths but if we confess with our mouths and believe in our hearts in our very being with a certainty with an assurance that God hath raised him from the dead raised the Lord Jesus Christ that one who came into this world and died that one who was buried that one on that third day he rose again from the dead victorious and is alive if we confess with our mouths the Lord Jesus and believe in our hearts that God has raised him from the dead thou shalt you will be saved it's very important it's important that we are ready because the Bible tells us in Revelation 20 verse 15 that whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire there is a place prepared there's a place prepared but which place will you be going to there is a heaven which God created for those to trust him for those who love him for those who believe in him it is a place where the Lord Jesus is and you can go there too but there's also a place called hell there's a place called the lake of fire which is prepared now God did not prepare that place for people of this world it was prepared for the devil and it is the place where the devil will go but all who refuse the Lord Jesus Christ 
It's the place where you will go to. If you refuse him. If your name is not found written in the book of life. You'll be cast into the lake of fire. Cast into the lake of fire. Ecclesiastes tells us to everything. There is a season and a time. To every purpose under heaven. A time to be born. And a time to die. Are you ready? You know there were many people who were not ready. When the government put additional lockdown measures in place today. When they put those lockdown measures in overnight. Because of the problems in Spain and other countries. Overnight they decided from 12 o'clock. This is going to happen. And lots of people were not ready. Overnight they changed the quarantine rules. And there were people who had just landed in Spain. And then they were faced with the difficulty of do they go home or do they stay? They were not ready. Overnight, things changed. But you know, the Apostle Paul, he says that he was ready. He was ready to preach. The Bible tells us as Christians, we should be ready to give an answer to God. We should be ready at all times to share about God. But you know, the Bible also tells us that we need to be born again. Except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. He cannot come to the kingdom of God. Are we ready? You know, lots of things we plan, don't we? We, pre we, pre we prepare. We have things set. But life doesn't happen always of how we plan. How we prepare them. How we have them in our heads. Now we have just had our fifth child. And there was a date that was set. This baby was due on the 10th of July. And the 10th of July goes on the calendar. But that's not a definite. That's just an idea of this is the due date. This is when the baby might come. It's not guaranteed. And in fact, it was 10 days later, on the 20th of July, that the baby came. Three days earlier, everything was fine. On the day of the 20th of July, going to the hospital, everything was fine. The labour started, the delivery was going fine, and then everything changed. All of a sudden, something wasn't right, and an emergency was needed, and doctors had to come. The plan changed. The plan changed. Nothing could prepare us for those events. We were not ready. In fact, not only were we not ready, but we were helpless. There was nothing we could physically do to change that situation. There was nothing we could say. There was nothing we could do to alter any of those things. We were helpless. We had no choice. You know, we all have rights today, don't we? We didn't have any rights. Any rights to say, well, let's do this or let's do that. We had to trust someone who knew what they were doing. We had to place our trust in the hands of somebody we didn't know. We had to put our trust... In somebody who we believed was a doctor. Who we believed had got qualifications and knew what they were doing. There wasn't time for me to say, can I have a look at your certificates? There wasn't time for me to say, well, do you know what you're doing? Have you done this before? We had to trust. We just had to say, get on with it. And put our trust. That they knew what they were doing. That is exactly what we have to do. With our salvation. We have to put our trust. In the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't need proof. That a doctor's got the qualifications. Because we trust. That they wouldn't be in the position they were in. If they didn't. But the Bible tells us this. 
The Bible tells us, for when we were yet without strength, in due time, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Just as we were without strength on that occasion, we had to rely on someone else. That they would be able to help in the circumstance and deliver that baby safely. When we were yet without strength, when we couldn't do things on our own, when we were helpless and hopeless, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God, commended for demonstrated, showed his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Whilst we were guilty, whilst we were unlovable, whilst we were full of sin, the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross. He gave himself for you and for me, that we might trust him, that we might have faith in him, that we might rely upon him. Are we ready to trust him? The Bible tells us that neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Are we ready to trust him? The Bible tells us, behold, now is the accepted time. It is the right time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The time to be saved is now. Just as there's a time to be born and there's a time to die. The best time to get right with God is now. We're not guaranteed another second. See John 1 verse 12 tells us. As many as received him. To them gave he the power. To become the sons of God. Even to them. That believe on his name. We need to trust him. We need to believe in him. We need to accept him as our Lord and Saviour. There's lots of bad news in this world today, isn't there? There's lots of bad news. But there's also lots of good news. There's bad news when we look at the Bible. The bad news is that we're all sinners. We've all sinned. We've all fallen short of God's standard. Romans tells us that there is none that does good. No, not one. The Bible tells us that we deserve to die. The soul that sinneth shall die. The Bible tells us in Romans 6, 23 that the wages of sin is death. The Bible tells us that we cannot earn our salvation. It is not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, Titus would tell us. We're condemned. We read, didn't we, that he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed. We deserve this eternal punishment. Whoever's name was not written in that book of life will be cast into the lake of fire. We deserve to die. We cannot find the way on our own. We have a sat nav. And sometimes we think we know better. And we ignore it and we go our own little way. And sometimes we do all right and sometimes we don't do very well. The Bible tells us there's a way which seems right. It looks right. It seems right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. That's the bad news. We're all sinners. We know the Lord Jesus Christ came to save sinners. Christ Jesus Came into the world to save sinners. 1 Timothy would tell us. The Bible tells us that we deserve to die. But the Bible tells us the Lord Jesus Christ died for us. God showed his love toward us in that while we yet sinners. Christ died for us. Christ died for our sins. According to the scriptures. Was buried and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. We can't earn our salvation, was the bad news. 
But the good news is, for by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. The bad news, we're condemned. But the good news is the Lord Jesus Christ can cleanse us from that condemnation. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, to them that trust him as their saviour. We deserve the eternal punishment. Whoever's name was not found written in the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire. But the good news is that the Lord Jesus gives eternal life. For, by, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The bad news was that we can't find the way on our own. There's a way which seemeth right unto a man, but there ends thereof are the ways of death. But the good news is the Lord Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no one cometh unto the Father but by me. There's ultimate bad news in this world. The ultimate bad news is this. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him now if you know your bible you'll know there that i missed out the beginning of that verse because that is the ultimate good news the ultimate good news is he that believeth on the son hath everlasting life are you ready are you ready to put aside your pride are you ready to put aside your self-will are you ready to trust the Lord Jesus Christ. Will you accept the good news? Or are you happy with the bad news? The Lord Jesus said, repent and believe the gospel. The gospel is good news. The Lord Jesus Christ urges us to repent, to turn away from those things, that, those ways we were going, and to trust the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. We can know our sins forgiven. We must meet God. It is appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment. We must meet God. We must trust God. We must Come to him. We may be successful. We may be healthy. We might have a good family. But can we say we are ready? To be ready requires a new birth. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. We're sinners. We need a reset. You know how you have to reset your computer by a reef start? We need to reset to repent and to believe. Are we ready? Amos chapter 4 tells us, verse 7, prepare to meet thy God. You know, we have a saying in this world, don't we? And the saying is the world is prepare to fail. Fail to prepare. If we fail to prepare, we'll fail. Prepare to fail. Well, the Bible tells us Prepare to meet thy God. Are you ready to meet God? If you were to meet the Queen of England, if you were a, a fan of the royalty, you would prepare, wouldn't you? You would look for a nice outfit. You would get yourself ready. And you would spend lots of time to make sure you were right to face the Queen. Are you prepared to meet God? Are you ready to meet God? Are you right to meet God? Because the Bible tells us we can't come to God in the same state that we came into this world. We can't come to God in our sins. But we have to come to God in his way to trust him. He that believeth on the Son hath life. But he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abideth on him. 
Well, thank you again for listening to us. And you can catch us on Bethesda Gospel Hall on our Facebook page, on our website, what's in it number for me.org.uk. And thank you.